Hey, what's going on guys? Coming again here. In this video, we're going to be creating our game world. So the entire game map is going to be a one-dimensional array. And uh, those elements uh, that are non-zero elements would be representing the walls. And we'll also provide the scaling. So to scale a single given uh, map index, like map element, uh, would, it, would it get scaled into a rectangle on our in a graphical screen but before we start let's have a look at how the end result is going to look like just to ensure your motivation Okay, so currently we have this sort of an output, but uh, I've just realized that it would be better to just to swap the colors. So let's start with that first. So I just want uh, to have the white background. And actually, I probably don't even need that uh, to draw the rectangle at all and just to save the performance. But for now, let's just swap them like so. And I also want the black uh, the black font right over in here okay now it's much better and yeah I'm just wondering so probably we don't even need this uh, uh, this rectangle being drawn at all yeah we don't need this so this improves the performance slightly a little bit so I just forgot to do this in the very first part okay and now let's go to our map so the very first thing to consider when to find the constant that is called map size. So uh, this game would assume the square map, like n by n squares. And let's start with 16. You can later on like make it whatever, however, no matter how big you want to make it, doesn't matter really, like 100 per 100, 1000 per 1000, doesn't matter, so whatever size would be supported. And well, but, but by the time we'll have the map uh, size of 16 elements and yeah, just let me scroll down a little bit so another absolutely essential constant is called map scale so uh, it, uh, for now we'll make it 10 uh, just uh, so it would have been a 10 pixels per square so uh, this sort of a scaling from the array index and to this rectangle that is drawn to the game screen uh, well, for now, we're just doing this for the visual representation of what the ray casting is. Uh, it, it, in the real game, it would only be represented on a mini map that would be drawn like somewhere in the corner of the screen. But I just want to emphasize that this sort of a um, uh, parameter like uh, map scale is absolutely essential. It's not only essential to detect the collision between the player and the wall between the uh, array that is casted from the player to the outer world, so where the ray hits the wall. So ray as a graphical element can't hit the array index, but it can hit the rectangle that being scaled from that array index. So uh, all of this stuff would be represented in the graphical way, in the easiest way possible, just to, just to understand how this works. Because for me personally, when I've been following the tutorials on, on how to make this type, it wasn't really that clear. So. I really hope that this kind of makes sense. Okay, so the next parameter is the map range. So the map range uh, is how far we want to cast our rays, and we simply say map scale multiplied by the map size. That's pretty simple and straightforward. And the very last constant is the map speed. So here is the deal. Uh, for now, just for just from the didactic purposes. Uh, from the exact perspective, we are having the map scale equal to 10 in order to have the entire map fit the uh, width and height of our screen. However, if you will have a very huge map in the real game, uh, you won't be able and you, you won't be able to fit this entire screen. And, uh, and another important thing that increasing this parameter allows to make the quality of rendering better because the greater scale of a tile we have, 
the more rays could potentially hit that sort of a tile. The more rectangles we later on would be rendering our, in, within our 3D projection, hence the better quality we'll have of the eventual picture. And in particular, we would be using the 64, uh, the 64 pixels because that's the exact width of the textures. So Wolfenstein 3D textures has 64 by 64 pixels, and it's really handy to use the 64 map scales to uh, to kind of map single pixel to the single kind of part of this tile. So that, that's just really handy. But for now, if, if I just make it uh, 64 at the moment, uh, the squares would be too big and it would be hard to understand something. So for now, I just keep it equal to 10. And because we're supposed to be running some tests on how to make the player move in the collision, the player and wall collision detection, so lots of debugging before we actually draw our 3D projection, we need the map speed. So how fast uh, the player is going to be moving uh, from uh, uh, like relative to the site, uh, to uh, relative to the size of these tiles. So uh, relative to the map scale and. The very last thing, so we need to say uh, map scale. So uh, I've found this value using the trial and error method. So map scale uh, divided by two and divided by 10. So this is going to be our speed that we would be using when we'll implement uh, a player that is kind of moving into whatever direction. Okay, and finally, a uh, variable map. So this is going to be the array of 16 by 16 characters. So let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, right? So let me just quickly check this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Ah, okay, I'm sorry. 1, 2, 3, four, five, six, seven, eight. And just to ensure, let's make it like, like this, yeah. So we have 16 here. And here we want all the zeros. So I just want to create an empty map for now. Oh, that's clear. Okay. And copy, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it should be 16. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, this should be correct. Okay, and now here, after we have updated the screen, we want to draw the map. Well, later on, we'll, uh, the code we're supposed to be writing now, we'll alter it a little bit later on to use it to draw the mini map. But at the moment, so there would be some different con scaling constants. But for now, uh, we'll keep it as is, just because the next few videos, we're going to be debugging using this kind of schema here. So this is this is very important. And now we need to loop over our uh, the, the over this array over all of the elements of this kind of array the map array so I can say for variable row equals to zero row is less than map size which is equal to 16 okay and row plus plus and then the same but for column okay so column here column here and column here. Now we need to convert the row and column coordinates into the square index. So we're a uh, variable square. And the formula to do this is simple. So we can say row multiplied by the map size. If you have the, the width and height of your map different, in this case, you'll need to multiply by the map width. So by 16 in this case. So this, yeah. So this is clear, uh, multiplied by map size plus the column. And now uh, we can say if map indexed by our square, I'm sorry, indexed by our square is equal to true, but let me just make it you know, like visually, obviously without this equals to one, it still can equals to true, but just to make things 100% clear. In this case, we just want to write, uh, want to draw a rectangle. That's pretty it. So uh, let's let's pick up some 
uh, yeah, let's just pick some rectangle, creating some cube, creating a rectangle. Uh, and for a dark part, let it be something like five, maybe five, 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 like this. And now, so here. So the width and height would be the map size. Uh, oh, sorry, map scale. Sorry, guys, this, this, this is absolutely essential. So map scale, yeah, uh, this value of 10 now. So the width would be 10 pixels and the height would be 10 pixels. Just for now, later on, we'll convert this to 64 to fit the texture width. And yeah, later it would be kind of bigger scores. But for now, this is literally enough. And now the offset coordinates, so X and Y coordinates. So we need to say column multiplied by the map scale. Okay. And row multiplied by the map scale as well. So yeah, this is it. And otherwise, uh, otherwise else we want to have just kind of like some light area like this okay sorry and let's have a look at our map okay just probably some error here is arising map is not defined yeah i'm sorry yeah uh i just i shouldn't make it big just because it's not a constant yeah okay this is it but now the problem is that we have our nice, pretty, pretty nice map. But let's actually try to centralize it. It's not essential. This this might be working as like like this as well. But uh, yeah, it's just better to centralize this. Well, uh, on the other hand, when we when we would be placing the player, it might be a little bit tricky. But yeah, well, anyway, anyway, we yeah, it's just. Yeah, so let's just centralize it first and it doesn't matter. Okay, so we need to take uh, an offset. So this would be canvas dot width multiplied by two minus, and now we need to take the map range. So the ma map size, uh, like number of elements multiplied by the map scale. Uh, this is the map range, so map range and divided by two and let's make it integer so math dot floor okay and now this should be the same for our row so here i can say like so plus but the canvas canvas height in this case Okay, let's have a look. Yeah, and the same for, for another part as well. So here, beast plus so map width. Okay, and here plus and the map height. Okay, yeah, and now we have our map being rendered exactly in the center of the screen and now guys the most uh well for me personally that's the most exciting part so uh so you can see that the dark uh dark gray represents the wall while the light gray represents the empty space where the player would be able to uh, move uh move with the rate so now if now the matter of creating a game world the matter of creating this mazes where the player would be walking and shooting enemies is just a matter of setting up uh, a non-zero value so let's say i just start creating some walls like this and if we have a look then easily we're getting this wall being rendered so whatever walls uh whatever values would be equal to one we would be having a wall there so that's really amazing thing uh for me personally so uh it's really easy to change the game and when it comes to the textures uh the matter of having different textures on different wall blocks and by the way what would be distinguishing between the 
X and Y uh, kind of edges of the single block. In that case, we'll, we would be using another integers like 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. And uh, every integer would be associated with a certain texture. So in order to create a texture, uh, uh, to provide a different texture for a single wall block, we'll just say like 2, 3 or something. But for now, obviously, it just... Yeah, uh, for now it doesn't do it because it does it only for one. So uh, probably it would be better to say is not equal to zero. Okay, so in this case, yeah, would it be printing whatever blocks. Later on, on the mini when it comes to drawing the minimap, we can add the colors. So let's say uh, stone walls, would it be gray? Let's say bricks, would it be brown? Etc. Just to give an idea from the bird's eye view perspective of what in, what of what kind of uh texture we have on the wall even if we look in from the top okay guys so i think this is it so yeah for now to in order to avoid being distracted let's bring it back to one let's say like this and uh here sorry uh so the next thing to consider we need to create a player and the the player would be represented by the two dimension by by the circle and the player angle, really the direction where the player is looking to, would be represented as the line. And then we'll need to uh, bind the keys uh, on a keyboard to make our player moving around the map. And also uh, provide the collision detection as well. So just to make sure that the player doesn't walk through the walls. But this is going to be the topic of the next tutorial. So this is it from my side, guys. Thanks, thanks for watching. Until the next time, and take care.